go. Um, yeah, the power of technology. I'm joined now by Rao from uh, Shikari. Hello. <laughs> you have a fantastic display picture, might I add, for this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, what is it? Something being startled by a fox. Oh, no, I meant your... Um, your zoom profile pictures you hold oh oh yeah that's entirely that's me uh quite happily drinking a, a g and t or something yeah <laughs> oh good <laughs> um so how are you finding lockdown um okay um i like you know i, I have my health my family have their health i'm very lucky in that respect most of the people um that i know have have come through the the virus if they've had it um i'm pretty sure I've, I've had it but have been um asymptomatic so yeah feeling feeling very lucky um I, i'm kind of used to like solitary living um you know yeah. as a musician as a producer I'm, I'm used to being buried in my studio for for hours and days <laughs> um but yeah obviously this has been quite a while now and i've only really sort of had meaningful interaction with one other person so life has become very weird but i'm i'm sort of i'm, I'm hanging in there yeah how, how are you doing um yeah just i'm a i work in a warehouse so i deal with the accounts so i'm having to work so nothing's really changed right um, having a baby in like two weeks time so no midwife appointments wow. so that's stressful as fuck in a oh, God. <laughs> oh man well uh, congratulations and best of luck uh, i'm allowed two hours in and then i have to leave the hospital and i can only get them then when they leave wow yeah because they're locking down all the hospitals like you can go in for the birth you can stay two hours and then you gotta leave and then when they're discharged you're gonna meet them damn so God. i'm gonna have a dominoes i'm gonna starfish i'm gonna have a fantastic full <laughs> night's sleep and uh, yeah it's gonna be great <laughs> Oh, amazing. <laughs> uh, so you're number two in the charts um, as of recording, which is yeah. great because yes. it's, um, it's one of those weird things where you put out a body of work and you can only showcase it through social media and like a, an Instagram or a Facebook live. And I, I guess the whole world is ready to hear it live and um, yeah, we're, we're ready to play it live, that's for sure, but it's going to be a long time. How, how, I mean, how, how long were you into demoing those new songs into the live set before, you know, you had to wait, well, eight, eight months minimum? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, we started writing the tracks early last year, this time last year, I suppose. Um, and yeah, we, we started actually rehearsing them uh, about three weeks before lockdown. Um, and we stopped about a, a week or two before lockdown because we were like, this is, we should have already been locked down. This is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the, uh, the, the vibe in this, in the tiny practice studio that we use just within those four walls, just the four of us was incredible with the new tracks. So like, yeah, I can't wait to see what it's going to feel like when we eventually yeah. get to play it. But yeah, do, you know, a... do you know which ones would, are going to work well or because of this um, this gap this, um, of release to you know, touring, would you just ask the fans which songs are you vibing more off the album because they've had longer to live with the album in a way or um... is, it, is it kind of like a more live dynamic and which song works in which order kind of building up that yeah. roller coaster of a live show? Yeah, we, we always try and make the, the live show like a journey and make sure it's like all encompassing. So it includes stuff from, you know, every era of the band as as well as every sort of emotion that we try and convey, like make it a, a real sort of broad experience in terms of the, the music. Um, but I mean, there's definitely tracks that, I mean, we've only played like a few of them uh, in, in, in the rehearsal studio, but the, yeah, there's definitely ones that we're, we, already can't wait to, to play live i suppose all the ones we released before the album like they're all the sort of bangers really of, of, yeah, of the album yeah. but there's a lot of like more prog stuff as well which i think will be just as fun live um yeah. but perhaps like the people will be aching to hear like the dreamers hotel and tina and the great unknown more than than other tracks live perhaps i don't know yeah we'll have to we'll have to ask them and see those poor songs i've had to sacrifice 
the, the staples in the set list to be replaced by new songs. Yeah. So you've, got a, you've got a massive catalog now and it's... Yeah. That's the hardest bit about being in a band, <laughs> like yeah. picking the set list. Like we, we you know, we only argue as as band members when we're picking a set list. Like other than that, we're we're pretty lucky, really. Are you all on the same page with that, or do you all have like a different idea for a set list? Um, I think we all know that the end goal is to make a performance that showcases the full breadth of the band. That's the that's the end goal. But then, of course, we're all going to have favourites. We're all going to have tracks that yeah. we prefer playing live to listening to, and vice versa. So yeah, there's always like a bit of friction, but we usually get to a a, 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 a state where we're all fairly happy with the set list. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so I love the album. It's a it's a fantastic summer album for people to listen listen to indoors. Yeah, um, it's <laughs> it's great. Um, when I hear it, I feel like it sits because you've said in previous interviews that it's it's supposed to encompass Shikari as a whole with bits of elements here and there to mm. an album to show your friends. I feel like it fits perfectly in between uh, a flash flood of color and mind sweep. I don't know if it's because of the like, dub element that synth electro, um, almost sometimes hard hitting tracks that mm. I'm vibing towards. Um, the allergy of extinction. I think that is a fantastic track. And I would love to hear you do an orchestral album and then just fuck with it sonically. I think yeah, that yeah. would be like a proper Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor, turning <laughs> knobs and plugins and samplers and stuff like that. That'd be wicked. Um, so which song came first in the in the writing pro- process and guided you down that that road? Oh, God. Um, I've... Oh, I can't remember. Um, I think Crossing the Rubicon, track two on the album, was one of the first. I don't know if it was the first. Because I can remember thinking that this wasn't a massive departure from like the, the the singles of The Spark. So like Live Outside and stuff. It felt like within the same universe. Um, but then the songs that came up after that were just going off in all sorts of directions. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is going to be a really diverse album. Um, but that, that, that's a, it's a weird bit that, that I think we work in quite a, a strange way in that I'll, I'll stop writing when I've got 50 song ideas. Um, and then the, so the difficult bit then is actually whittling it down and working out what's going to make the album. So you sort of shoot yourself in your, in the foot a bit, yeah, but I think yeah. having such uh, a landscape to choose from that ensures that the album is like, as diverse as we want it to be without it being sort of forced and contrived. Um, so yeah, I, I find just, I just write, write, write at the beginning. Um, and, and yes, yeah, see, see what comes out. But yeah, I can remember that Rubicon was one of the first, I think, I think the great unknown was one of the first as well, because the opening piano riff in that had been with us since the mind sweep. Um, okay. so that was on a demo, uh, for the mind sweep, but the, the song itself, we weren't that keen on. It was a completely different song, but just yeah. happened to have, that piano uh sort of riff ostinato um and yeah so so that got developed in a in a completely new direction and then i was like ah okay this needs to, to be on the album yeah is there a lot of that going back and listening to old demos and thinking well that that is the missing piece for this track that isn't quite working and then just taking a riff or a beat and then just overlaying it and then yeah the next thing yeah th- there is a fair bit of that i think the main way i write is usually something will just like arise in my head like some idea and if if i'm if i manage to remember it then i'll develop i'll spend a day developing that idea as a song but then there are definitely times where i'll be like just surfing through the the treasure chest of forgotten you know songs and and yeah trying to develop different ideas and stuff yeah yeah awesome um i gotta ask how come the king is so far down on the track listing because that is that is my that is my favorite track on the album. And oh hell yeah! Quite, quite at the bottom, I was like, "How? It's just it's it's an absolute <laughs> banger!" I can't wait to see it live, but it's so far down. I was just like, "Yeah." Is that is that the journey you wanted to take them on, or was that just? Do you have to yeah. do it as 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 a body of work, or could you just put it on like skip or random or? Do you know what I mean? 
I mean, I think I would always prefer that people listen to it in that order, but like, I, it doesn't really matter. Like, <laughs> I think that, you know, there's, there's some songs that I think really work well coming off the back of each other, but yeah, the King is kind of just on its own back there, isn't it? It's, 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 it's yeah. a sort of just a last outpouring of just like energy before the album comes to its close with the, with waltzing too. Um, but yeah, I, I, there isn't really a, it's not like we were tucking it away at the end of the album because it was one that we weren't happy with or we don't do any of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, um, yeah, it just, it just felt, it, it, it was the last one to make it onto the album. It, it very, very almost didn't make it because we, we struggled with that song more than any other in terms of uh, the songwriting and in terms of the production. So it was only at literally like the 11th hour, like it, the album was already being mastered and I was finishing off the mix oh, wow. for that one. So it was, it was so intense, but I'm so glad we got there in the end and we, and we stuck with it because yeah, it's going to be another, it's going to be a banger live. Yeah. Um, as, as the producer, did you, f is, did you feel like this was your baby in a way or did all the bands have like a producing role to it to try and, you know, steer the ship in the, in the right direction? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm at the, the front of the ship. Like, I mean, I, I, as the main songwriter and the producer, yeah, you're always going to be sort of, you, you know, you're holding the reins. But I, I think as a band now, we work so well together. Like, I mean, this this album would have not come out on time if it wasn't for Rory, our guitarist. Like he, I mean, he was an engineer. He was just as, just as a problem solver. He's so good at that kind of thing, just yeah. like keeping everything moving and and thinking outside the box about, you know, different ways to do things. And so he, he was the programming he did, the engineering he did, he was so central to it. And I was so thankful to the, to the amount of effort that he put in. Um, but yeah, and in, in every respect, we just tried to step it up. Like Rob was central to a lot of the, the kind of creative philosophies of, of this album. So, so he was adamant that he didn't want to use any drum samples on this album, which is, I don't know if, if a lot of, you know, non-musicians non really, think about this but like most of the albums that we all listen to the drums are other people's samples or they're yeah. they're the band's drums but then they're layered with other people's samples and it's fine you know that if you want a, a wicked sound that's that's definitely a shortcut yeah. um but yeah we were adamant about we want every single drum sound in this album to be our own made in the studio in 2019 um and at the same time, make it the really put the effort in and trying to produce it in the way that it's clearly the best sounding, most diverse sounding uh, rhythmic record record that we've done. And yeah, so Rob was central to to a lot of work in that respect. Um, and then Chris, our, our bassist, it's now it, he's more the live guy, so it's now his job to work out how the hell we're going to play it live. He's our Ableton wizard, um, so he's again he's central to the whole thing like we wouldn't be able to play play these songs live if it wasn't for him so we've all sort of slotted into these ways of working and and uh yeah it's, it's a real sort of unit now so it's not like second guessing it's all like you've got your thing you know how to do it and everything yeah really can sing. Oh, that's pretty cool yeah um so you've also announced the uk tour for november yes are, are we still hoping that's going ahead i mean is who there, knows is there a backup plan uh, I mean, that we haven't like, no, I mean, no, at the moment, we're just hoping. We're just fingers crossed, like, because this, you know, these dates for us, they were booked um, towards the end of last year. So it was, this was always going to uh, be announced and uh, the ball was rolling from early in the year. So we couldn't postpone these dates. So, yeah, we had to announce it. Now, now, if we have to postpone it closer to time, then we have to do that. But we're hoping that... Uh, you know, the efforts that our government will make over the, the coming months, once they get over the fucking atrocity that how it's been managed so far, um, will mean it where we don't have the second wave, which everyone fears as we get closer to winter. <coughs> so yeah, we're, we're hoping that we'll be better prepared and um, we'll be able to, to go forth and, and play this tour. Excellent. Well, I was looking forward to the um, album release shows. I think I was going to go to the one in Bristol, um, but instead I will go to the one in Cardiff, which is great because the next day you're playing Ali Pali. So you've gone from yeah. like a student club to 
that fantastic Victorian. Yeah. Building. I think it's one of my favorite venues in the world, really. It's just not, not just to play, but like emotionally as well. It, it's only, I mean, I could walk there. So I, I, I'm, I'm in North London, right, right by Ali Pali. So it's, um, it, it's a venue that's just, yeah, a lot of, a lot of had some great times there. My, my brother met his now wife there and yeah, it's, oh, wow. uh, it's a, it's a beautiful venue. So much history, so much character. Like yeah. I, I, we, I, I mean, we've never played Wembley, which is sort of the Wembley Arena is is kind of the kind of the same level. I think there's it's maybe like one or two thousand more capacity. Um, but I just I prefer Ali Pali so much. It's so much. It has so much more character than a sort of you know these arenas that are just full of advertising, corporate, corporate advertising. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I've um, one of my favorite shows there was the Warp Tour when it came over here and they had the skate yeah. ramp and the vert and they had so many van bands playing creeper before they were signed like downstairs in the basement and wow that was that was fucking yeah. awesome but yeah man I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this live um i have noticed you guys have been digging deep into the the archives of live footage and trying to is, is that do you have these all on like a hard drive of all these live shows or is it trolling the internet and then going <laughs> a bit of both i mean i don't have any of it personally i'm like the, <laughs> the least sentimental person um but yeah no i i mean i think between us and our management there's like you know things are sort of bookmarked um and it, it's always nice to take those trips down down memory lane as well um but yeah try trying to do what we can to to keep the new content flowing in. So we're doing a, a few live streams and things as well. I mean, so is every other bastard, but um, yeah, yeah it, it, that's been really fun. Awesome, man. All right, well, I won't keep you. I've, 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 I've got my chats. Um, I hope you yeah. enjoy the rest of your, your afternoon. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Cheers right. for having me. And uh, I'll keep plugging it away and I'll catch you in November. So my kid. Yeah. Fingers crossed. See you then. Right, stay safe, man. Nice one. You too. Take care.